Hey there, everybody. Mr. Marg with you. And in this video, we are going to be studying relative motion. That is, how motion is different when two different observers are observing the same thing. So to kind of get us started, let's think about a classic thought experiment, which is a car, something like this, moving in one direction, that is being observed by two different people. And what's different about how they observe the motion of the car? So our two different people, one is Sally, and the other is Bob. And if you look at that diagram, you'll notice that the car is moving towards the right, away from Sally, and towards Bob. And so if we think, how are those two people going to view this differently? We can just do a position versus time graph like we've done in the past. So if towards Bob is the positive x direction, when we graph position versus time with two dots instead of just one, a blue dot representing where Bob thinks the car is, a green dot where Sally thinks the car is, we would notice that those dots would be in different locations. From Bob's point of view, that car is 15 meters to the left. From Sally's point of view, that car is 5 meters to the right. And so they're not going to agree on where the car is because they're viewing the car from different positions. If we then let the car move and we graph where it goes, we would see that in both cases, we get the same change in position. Like it moves by five meters in the positive x direction from both people's point of view. And so they would agree on the velocity of the car, but they would always disagree on its position. And so because they're at different positions, they think the car is at different positions. So Sally and Bob um, are examples of what we call frames of reference in physics. A frame of reference is simply a defined zero point for any kinematics or later on more physics quantity, such as position, velocity, or even time. Um, difference in time perspective comes into play when you get to Einstein physics and special relativity and then general relativity. And so different observers can observe motion in different ways because they're looking at it from their own frame of reference from their position, which might be different than somebody else's. And so in the case of our people viewing this car, both Sally and Bob, or excuse me, both Sally and Bob agree on the velocity of the car, but they disagree on the position of the car. So in this example, we have Sally back again in her position, but Sally is on a skateboard, which is not pictured, and she is moving to the right at three meters per second from behind the race car and the train. So from Sally's point of view, because she's moving in the same direction as the car is and as the train is, um, she's not going to see the thing move as fast as it was from Bob's point of view. So to calculate the velocity of the race car relative to Sally, would still add the 5 and the 20, because those two are still in the same direction. But because Sally's motion in the same direction as the um, car makes it look like it's going slower, we would just subtract that from um, the other two numbers. And so here we would find the velocity of the car by doing 5 plus 20, that's the car and the train, and then minus 3 to account for the fact that Sally is also moving along in the same direction as the race car and the train. So when we encounter things like this, really the best thing to do is just to draw a diagram and ask yourself, is this particular aspect of the situation making the velocity look bigger or smaller? And then you would know if you should add or subtract.
And so from both those people's perspective, we were able to do some simple arithmetic to figure out their velocity, the velocity of their car relative to those people. So Sally and Bob, even though they uh, may agree on the velocity when they are standing still, disagree on the velocity when they are moving relative to each other. And so in this case, they disagree on the position. Sally sees it to the right, Bob to the left. And they disagree on the velocity because Sally herself is in motion relative to Bob. So to kind of summarize this real fast, um, different observers are going to view motion differently if they have different frames of reference. Um, you can go easily from one frame of reference to another simply by adding and subtracting in most cases. There's not a frame of reference that's better or worse than any other frame of reference. Frame of reference is always a matter of convenience for the observer or whoever is doing the physics behind a particular example. Um, there's no place in the universe that is absolutely still. There's no absolute frame of reference. All motion is relative to a given observer. So right now you might ask yourself, am I moving? And most people would go, no, I'm sitting still here in a chair or something like that. Unless we're sitting in a car right now, in which case you may go, well, yeah, the car is moving. But when you think about it, we're all moving because we're all on Earth that's spinning through space and hurling around the sun at 36,000 miles per hour. Uh, it's just that everything around us is always moving at that same speed. So from our frame of reference, the walls around us are still. From our frame of reference, the steering wheel in front of us is still while we're driving. Which I hope you're not driving right now. That'd be a really bad idea. Focus on the road. Phone away, kid. But the point is, is that you define your frame of reference and everything else defines its own frame of reference. And so there can be disagreement on what's moving and what is not moving. There can be disagreement on how fast things are moving. The same way there can be disagreement on where things are. Something may be far away from you and close to somebody else. Another example of a frame of reference. Um, a real quick aside, this, will, this won't come into play really until a little bit later in the course, but in AP Physics, both Physics 1 and Physics C, if you take that course, you deal only with what are called inertial reference frames. And an inertial reference frame means a reference frame that is not accelerating, and it's not speeding up or slowing down. If you are in an inertial reference frame, then all the rules of physics are the same, which is a really important part of Einstein's theory of special relativity. And so the only things you will be asked to do from one reference frame to another is um, things that are moving with constant speed. We're going to study an, uh, acceleration next, but we'll always do accelerated motion from a still frame of reference, not a speeding up or slowing down frame of reference. An example of a non-inertial frame of reference would be like the teacup ride at the county fair, you know, the one that spins you around and you get all dizzy in. Um, if you were to try to construct the laws of physics while sitting in one of those teacups, you would get different physics than what we see if we're not spinning around or speeding up or slowing down. And so that's kind of an important part of Einstein's general relativity theory that you might study a little bit later on in your physics career. So the two things that you need to be able to do is figure out what a velocity is relative to another observer, given a diagram or description, kind of like we saw, and then be able to explain why, in general terms, um, different observers disagree on the motion of an object. And that's kind of it. Really, it's just being, being able to draw diagrams and graphs, kind of like what we've been practicing so far this year. We'll work on that aspect of it in class next time. I'll see you then. Till then. Start it off.